Start off with uh, what the status of your uh, vehicle development efforts are. So we have either three or four vehicles that are generally flyable in the shop right now, depending on where things are at. We have a rocket racer airplane, we have a methane-powered module, which we're doing sometimes in helium pressurized and sometimes self-pressurized mode. We have our super module, which is an externally pressurized LOX alcohol vehicle, which is going to be our level two vehicle entrant for the LLC this year. And then we still have Pixel, which is still flyable as kind of a backup LLC vehicle. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are your plans right now for uh, the Lunar Liner Challenge? We should be in a position where as soon as they say we can go, we're going to go. I am, and we, we hope that that's relatively soon. We are running through the last bits. We've submitted all the paperwork for waivers to be able to do free flights at our home base airfield. We thought we were over all the hurdles on there, and I had really hoped that I was going to have some free flight boosted hops to show at Space Access this year. But they tell us it's probably going to be three weeks for it to make its way through headquarters. Mm -hmm. And what about your, your uh, long-term plans for a suborbital vehicle? We are in discussions with various potential funding sources on there. Left to our own, we'll get through it, get to it eventually at our own pace, but we're still on the lookout for partners that want to make it happen at the quickest possible pace rather than at the pace that we get there on our own. So we have plans and secondary plans, contingencies, and all that stuff. If, if left to our own, we should be flying a bigger, stronger vehicle this year. Um, hopefully at our home base we can go up to six or 8,000 feet. We'll learn a lot about aerodynamics there. We'll probably build another vehicle. Almost without fail, we've built two new airframes or two new combinations a year, and I expect that to follow through this year as well. So I expect we'll at least start on a four-engine differentially throttled vehicle. Yeah. Now the, uh, the company's finances, the overall structure of the company have uh, changed over the last year or two. Well, the structure of the companies remained the same, but this was the first year where we turned a profit and I actually started paying back some of my investment. Uh, I've put in three and a half to four million dollars or so, but I haven't put in a penny since this time last year. In fact, it's almost exactly the one year anniversary. The last money that I put in was before Space Access last year. So we, everybody's on, uh, we have three full-time people. Everybody else is getting part-time pay on there. Uh, so we're a real company with real, uh, expenses and income and we are in the black so far for this last year and it's a little early to say how that's going to go this coming year because there's NASA budgets on this, uh, how rocket racing decides to pursue and how some of these other things go on but I'm at least cautiously optimistic that we'll continue to be profitable in the coming year as well as being able to accelerate our progress. You're mentioning, you know, it's it, you've been involved with this now for you know about close to a decade now yeah, on this. Um, what sort of the, the lessons you've taken away? I, I know you thought you would make more progress by now than, than you had. What are the sort of things that you have learned that you wish you'd known at the beginning? You know, there's not that many things that I look back and say, wow, we really made a bad decision there. Even the, the large things about starting with peroxide, even though we wandered in the wilderness a little bit on that, it was probably still good for us to get off to that early successful start. If we had started off with harder things, we might have given up after a year or so with, without having the kind of dramatic successes that we got. And, you know... I really don't have that much that I would change. It just turned out to be a little bit longer and more drawn out process than I would have hoped on there. Uh, certainly with exact technical foreknowledge, I could go back and say, well, we should have just started with this particular thing, and that would have cut years off of our development time, but none of them were really stupid things that we made bad decisions on before. It was a learning process, and even the things that we abandoned are in our toolbox for all the various things that we can do in the future. And that's one of our biggest strengths, is we have a broader base of experience, probably literally than any other company on Earth. I don't think there's another company that has built the 20 different types of vehicles with all the different control combinations and propellant combinations as we have. And there would have been some benefit to having the right choice and going straight down that road Having all of the breadth of experience does let us, it lets us approach each new problem and challenge from a lot better perspective than if we had just had this laser-tight focus through the whole thing. Mm 